You're watching the Lava Agni 2 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you won't need to actually disassemble the phone to replace those. There are 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now the flex cable for the macro and depth camera needs to be disconnected from the main board. There's some graphite film to help transfer heat. The dual LED flash is located on this flex cable. And the two megapixel depth and macro lens are located on this flex cable. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. There are also two coaxial cables on the main board, a white and a blue one, which need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's also a copper tape covering the front facing camera connector, which needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect and remove that. Here's a better look at the 16 megapixel front facing camera. There are two Phillips screws which are holding down the main board. So looking at the main board, there's a secondary microphone underneath the shield. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker on the top corner. There's some more graphite film on the shield to help transfer heat. The primary 50 megapixel camera is located here. And there's an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. And the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. The proximity sensor is located on the other side. And there's more graphite film on the back to help transfer heat, in addition to a lot of thermal paste. Once the graphite film and copper tape have been peeled back, we can see a thermal pad on top of the processor, as well as these chips over here. Here's a better look at the bottom speaker assembly. And there's a mesh filter over the speaker opening. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard. Now the fingerprint reader cable, as well as the two other ends of the coaxial cable, need to be disconnected from the subboard. There's another liquid damage indicator sticker on the subboard. The primary microphone is located underneath the shield and there's a rubber gasket around the charger port. 
The sim reader is located on the other side. Once the subboard has been removed, we can see the screen cable, which is connected to an extension cable that connects to the main board. So if you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and remove the speaker assembly itself, disconnect the cables and remove the subboard, giving you access to disconnecting the screen cable, at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply a new adhesive, and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. In order to remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 4700 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been removed and the extension flex cable is peeled back, underneath the graphite film we can see the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery in this portion, as well as the motherboard. The vibrator motor is located over here and it's held down with some adhesive. The same goes for the fingerprint scanner. And the flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located here. If you need to replace that, you have to just gently peel it off and pull it out of the frame. The earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held down with some adhesive. If anyone's worried about puncturing the microphone or the microphone filter by accidentally inserting the sim ejector tool in the wrong hole, you won't need to worry since both the microphone and the filter are seated above the hole, so there is no way they would get damaged. The same goes for the one on top. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.